Funding for the production of Folks is provided in part by the Friends of LPB. Why is nursing home life one of the most misunderstood aspects of our society? We deal with the elderly, we deal with the ill, and we deal uh, quite a lot with federal and state money. And what do residents think about nursing home life? It's not home, but it's a good place to be. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Hinton. And I'm Genevieve Stewart. Today on Folks, our program will focus on senior citizens. Our top story deals with nursing homes, who they are for, and how to go about choosing one should there be a need for someone in your family. We will also be reporting on another type of total care living and how some senior citizens are keeping themselves busy. That and more today on Folks. Everybody says folks. Today we are visiting St. James Place in Baton Rouge. It can best be described as a retirement village, a place where senior citizens can live independently with dignity and graciousness. Now later on in the program we'll be telling you more about St. James Place and what it has to offer. But first we'd like to share a form of life that involves a lot of the elderly population but is often misunderstood, and that's nursing home life. This is Ruth Pritson. She is one of about 26,000 senior citizens in Louisiana who lives in a nursing home. This is home to me. It's, it's home. I mean the word home, it, and it, it really is. I feel that way. I like everything about it, and I, when I go away, I miss it, and I'm always glad to come back. Ruth is 80 years old and blind. About a year ago, she began taking piano lessons. I have a teacher that teaches me by ear, you see, because I cannot see. And we, we, she plays it over, and then I take it from there. We try to, to make it that way, by ear. Thomas O'Neill is another nursing home resident. He lives at Jefferson Manor Nursing Home in Baton Rouge. O'Neill spends spring and summer months working in the garden. Here's what he thinks about nursing home life. It's not home, but it's a good place to be because the kids got to live their life and they step backwards to go along with you and they realize the hardships you're under and they try to be as helpful as possible. Olga Gonsolin and Eva Denham are also residents at Jefferson Manor. I came here last November and when uh, my, I had been living with my son's wife and my daughter-in-law thought I should go in a nursing home. So we tried one place out at Denham Springs. It's got my name, but I didn't like it. <laughs> so my pastor called Mr. Brown and he said I could, and so we came here and I knew this is a place where the Lord wanted me to be. And this is right, but it's proved out true. I've, yeah, I've received many blessings here. I have many friends here. What I love friends. <laughs> what about the food? How do you like the food? I think uh, the food is very good. I, I like food. I always eat enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the people? Are you making friends here? Well, yes. I could say I have a few friends, yes. Five or six, maybe. I do say one thing for this home that I never, this first place, the home I've ever been in, but the workers, both races, are wonderful. And I have many friends among them, and I love them, and the nurses are super duper. They've been tending to me. So I, 
this is where I'm going to be till the Lord calls me home. So. People like the ones you have just seen and heard reflect the abundance of life that can be found in Louisiana's nursing homes. But even with the great love for life these residents have, nursing home life still remains one of the most misunderstood aspects in our society. We deal with some very volatile issues, Ron. We deal with the elderly, we deal with the ill, and we deal uh, quite a lot with federal and state money. All three are very volatile, very emotional issues, and you put them all together, and that's our primary um, uh, thrust in nursing homes, then uh, that gives you uh, an unfortunate image sometimes. One way of overcoming the image problem, say nursing home officials, is to get the families of nursing home residents involved in nursing home life. Involvement um, of the family with the patient in the setting the patient is, is currently living. Uh, when families understand, when they visit, when they come to see the patient in the home, uh, we don't have an image problem. It's when the family doesn't come see the patient, doesn't visit, uh, then they don't understand what's happening there. Family involvement is very important in a nursing home, probably the most important part of a nursing home. If a family comes and dumps a resident at the nursing home and does not come and see the resident, then uh, we have problems with the resident. Uh, uh, and also we end up having problems with the family. Uh, to, in order to get family involvement, we try to get the family to uh, be involved in the development of uh, care plans uh, uh, when the resident is staffed on a quarterly basis when we pick up problems that uh, such as activity problems or lack of activity or a lack of uh, eating or something like that then we call the family and, and have them involved and say look we, we think you need to take this resident out some more or we think that uh, a few more visits would, would uh, help this resident a little more. Part of the problem with nursing home life is the feeling of guilt associated with placement of a loved one. The best thing to do, I think, to help them to deal with their guilt is to, to uh, help them in their examination of the alternatives and what it's doing to the family or what it's doing to them and uh, how it may be destroying the, the caretaker, may be going into a self-destruct situation because they cannot cope with it. A lot of the problems uh that nursing homes have are with families rather than the individuals themselves. I think too that uh, the, the insistence on the part of, of government regulators to see that certain criteria are met has had a profound effect. And then there has been the peer pressure uh, from, from other nursing home operators to provide better service and this uh, has an influence on, on what each of the nursing homes do. How should you go about choosing a nursing home for someone in your family? The proximity of the nursing home is very important. Uh, the reason I feel this way is because family visitation is very important in a nursing home. The more often a family visits, the, the happier the resident is going to be. The family should uh, look at several aspects of the nursing home. Uh, they should look at the way the staff interacts with the, fam uh, with the patients. Uh, they should uh, look at the patients themselves, how they look, are they up and dressed. Uh, um, ask the patients themselves some questions on how they like the food, how they like their environment. The family should all also look at the uh, cleanliness of a nursing home. I think that uh, everyone uh, has the ability to uh, look at an area and see how clean it is, and that's very important in a nursing home. An alternative to nursing homes would be a living care environment community like St. James Place. Now, some people would consider St. James Place a more elite form of residential living for the elderly. The residents here neither rent nor own their apartment units. For an entrance fee and monthly assessment, they have life use of their apartment and around-the-clock nursing home care. St. James Place was conceived to meet the needs of comparatively healthy, middle to upper income aging persons. The residential center stimulates mobility, provides a variety of group activities, and alleviates the worries of medical emergencies with no one to respond, as director Bill Bivens explains. We have residential, strictly residential, private, independent living apartments for those who are very much on the go, for those who are able to live without assistance. Yet we provide for them many services, many facilities, 
ranging from a fully staffed, licensed, skilled nursing home to the other services such as housekeeping, transportation, maintenance. We pay all utilities. We have a full activities program, a full time activities director whose sole responsibility it is to plan, implement programs. We have a lovely dining room that serves three meals a day every day of the year. Residents may invite family and guests for meals in the dining area or entertain a larger group in a private room. The ice cream parlor is a popular spot for congregating with friends or treating grandchildren, as is the adjacent indoor garden area. This lobby, complete with a library, is one of many conversation areas conveniently situated among the apartment's corridors. The fully equipped apartments include maid service, laundry, and a monitored call system for medical emergencies. An independent living person, retiree, in his beautiful apartment, furnished as he wants it furnished, and who may be 62, who may be 92, he knows that attached to down a carpeted corridor from his apartment is a nursing care center, which is a citadel, you might say, of protection to provide him with health maintenance programs, to keep him well, to prolong his period of independent living in the apartment. And during this time, we have all of the supportive services to the apartment, which in essence really allows him to live in a resort community type of atmosphere. The $20 million cost of the complex seems well invested as St. James Place residents explain why the total care community concept is important to them. My husband and I came just to look the place over so we would know what is available in our area. And the more we walked around and saw the advantages and the many facilities, we just decided that this was for us. Do you like the total care or life care community concept? That part of it appealed to us very much. We've had experiences with my husband's mother and my mother having to be in nursing homes for many years. And we thought that if we could spare our children the decision of having to make plans for us later on down the road, that it would be what we would like to do. Mrs. Uh, Hillsmeyer, do you take advantage of the fitness classes, ceramics classes, some of the other activities that they have here? I take every bit of it in. I walk two miles every morning and go to the exercise classes three times a day. Try to do everything I can so that I might live to be a hundred years old. Like George Burns? Like George Burns. <laughs> Wesley Plaza is another residential center for senior citizens. It is a rent subsidized complex owned by the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. At the forefront of the civil rights movement in the 60s, the ministerial group is breaking new ground with housing for golden agers. Hence, the $12 million garden apartment complex in Baton Rouge, with another in the planning for New Orleans. Wesley Plaza residents do not have to meet any income standards, but they are expected to pay a certain percentage of their rent, as manager Michael Cox explains. In a Section 8202 complex such as Wesley Plaza, the resident uh, pays 30% of their adjusted monthly gross income and the government will pay the other 70% for them. To qualify to be a resident here at Wesley Plaza, one would have to be at least 62 years of age or on disability and capable of maintaining an apartment on his or her own. The quadrangle arrangement of the complex allows residents to landscape and garden. The senior citizens also take an avid interest in decorating the interior of their apartments. The fully equipped units are complete with drapes, carpeting, and all modern conveniences. Complex residents have nothing but praise for their new home. If there was anything about Wesley Plaza you could change, what would that be? Anything I you don't, could I don't know of anything. There's nothing that I would like to change. We have a good manager, and we have a good dietitian, and all of that. The residents of Wesley Plaza have a variety of activities from which to choose. Everything from gardening, playing pool, crocheting, to quilt making. 
But the most fun part of quilt making is the conversation that takes place around the quilt. All the gossip. <laughs> Even in the twilight of their years, some residents indicated a hint of romance. Are you living by yourself? By myself. By yourself. Do you have a girlfriend here? Yeah. Oh, how nice. <laughs> yeah, I have one. You met her living here since you've been living here? Ah, I met her before I moved here. Do you have a boyfriend here? No, I don't have a boyfriend. And it's been 25 or 30 years since our boyfriend has approached me even. <laughs> Pride and satisfaction would best describe how Wesley Plaza residents feel about their new home. I just wanted everybody to know how nice this place is. Since I've been here, everybody I meet, with a, I meet them with a smile. Everybody's like me, they're happy all the time. Now many senior citizens, particularly those on low incomes, are having trouble paying their utility bills, especially during winter months. But there is a program called Project Care designed to help the aged with their utility bills. Here to tell us about it is Bill Benedetto from Gulf States Utilities. Welcome to folks, Bill. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Bill, exactly what is Project Care? Well, Genevieve, Project Care is um, a program that was developed back in March. Um, I, you know, for some time, we at Gulf States and a lot of people have been concerned about the rising cost of utilities, uh, in particular electric utilities, and, and the problems that it was creating for people who, the elderly on fixed income. Uh, we knew that there was a problem out there. We, we really didn't know how severe the problem was, but we knew that there was a problem. And we also were starting to get indications that uh, the people, uh, the elderly on, on fixed income, were having problems not only paying their utility bills, but, but also with some other expenses that were occurring. Historically, we have found that this group of customers, group of people, are very proud. Uh, they've, they've gone through life, they've uh, earned a living, uh, they've retired or uh, might have become ill, whatever uh, reasons, but uh, I think we all felt like they've paid their dues, you know, they've raised us, uh, they've put us through college and, and so forth, and, and now they're, they're trying to survive in a very inf uh, inflationary economy and that of course is being reflected in utility bills and we found that that uh, they pay their bills they want to pay their bills and in particular the utility bill uh, these people aren't the people who normally uh, um, get disconnect notices or having problems paying the utility bill usually the utility bill is the first bill they pay but we were concerned because we suspected that maybe they were paying the utility bill, the electric bill, the gas bill, in lieu of not paying other bills, uh, in lieu of not maybe buying medicine or clothing or something like this. So we took about the task of uh, trying to find out if our suspicions were correct and we did some research work and we had some conversations with different service agencies in the Baton Rouge area throughout Louisiana and in Texas too where our corporate headquarters is. And um, we found that a lot of people were seeing the same type of situation. And uh, once we knew that there, there was a need for this type of program, we had to determine what type of program we were going to do. There's all type of things you can do. You know, you could uh, talk about some special electric rates. You could talk about the lifeline rate concept that would be lower rates for certain people of certain age or certain uh, income. Um, we discussed all of these things. and. And we felt that probably uh, the best would be something that everybody could participate in, but could participate on a voluntary basis. Uh, in other words, if it was a lifeline rate where a rate structure would have uh, a group of customers paying less for electricity, then we, as another group of customers, would be subsidizing that, that customer. We'd be paying more in order for that group of customers to be paying less, whether we want it to or not. So we felt like maybe a program that voluntarily uh, people could participate in would be something uh, a lot better and it would be accepted a lot better. And we came up with the, the Project Care program and uh, it's been very successful up until now. Where did the initial funding come from for Project Care? Well, the, the, 
the initial funding came from our shareholders, from the people who own stock in Gulf States Utilities. Uh, the shareholders of the, of the corporation put up about $100,000, uh, $50,000 for the Texas operation and $50,000 for the Louisiana operations. Uh, after that, we went to our employees and asked our employees if they would like to participate in this. And we got very good response. About 80% of our employees participated through a payroll deduction plan where they contributed a, a dollar uh, each payday. And the dollar would be deducted from the paycheck and we go directly into the project care fund. And then in, in addition to that, of course, we went to our customers and asked our customers to participate also. And I must say that the response from the customers have been very, very good so far. Let's say I'm a customer who wants to contribute to Project Care. How do I go about doing so? Very, very, very simple. Uh, on each bill, each utility, Gulf States utility bill, there is a line at the bottom of the bill that says if you would like to participate in Project Care and contribute, you, all you have to do is add one dollar to your payment, to your utility payment. If your utility bill is um, $90 for that particular month, all you have to do is make out the check for $91. Now, you don't have to check anything off. Just merely make out the check for one extra dollar. Automatically, in our computer system, that one dollar will automatically go to the Project Care Fund. And also, we will give you a running total as how much you've contributed uh, in the in the fund on a monthly basis and so forth because it is tax deductible also and you will have that as a record at the at the end of the year um, it's uh... if a person would like to contribute more than one dollar to the fund then they would have to write out a separate check uh, unfortunately the computer set up that if you if you make your check out for the utility bill for two dollars then one dollar will go to project care but the other dollar will go towards the balance on your on your bill so it it, uh, it wouldn't work out that way so what we would like to do uh, and we've had customers who say, oh, look, I want to contribute uh, $50 in one lump sum, they would have to make out a separate check to Project Care. Okay. Suppose for a minute that I'm an elderly person who's having difficulty in paying my utility bills. How would I go about receiving help from Project Care? Very simple. A uh, person that's 62 years old or older uh, on a fixed income uh, and feels like that they need some aid, some help, uh, not only in utility bills, but you know, with any type of uh, really emergency when it comes right down to it, would contact one of the local service agencies. Now, the, the um, administrative agency here in Baton Rouge, in East Baton Rouge Parish, is the um, uh, um, Urban uh, Ministry Alliance. Uh, they administer the funds, but we work, they work through all the other service agencies like the Volunteers of America, the Salvation Army, and all your normal service agencies. A person could contact that agency and said that they would like to receive some aid from the Project Care Fund, and then the service agency would take it from there. It would go out and do the case study and then bring it to the Alliance. Um, the, um, we've helped a lot of people uh, in, in Louisiana, in operations in Louisiana. We've helped over 1,100 people so far since the program has been in, uh, in existence. Thank you very much Thank for being you. with us today on Appreciate Folks. It. We enjoyed it. Earlier, we told you about some of the extracurricular activities available to the elderly at nursing homes and residential villages. But what about those older persons who still live at home or with other family members? Well, a lot of them are keeping busy at the many senior citizen centers throughout the state. Senior centers, like the Fairfield Center in Baton Rouge, offer the elderly a wide range of activities. For example, exercise. At the Fairfield Center, the body recall exercise is the most popular activity. Three times a week, these senior citizens get together for a no-strain, no-sweat approach to healthier living. Well, this class is basically for senior citizens. It is a class that starts out very slow moving, and it's more of a movement class than an exercise class. So if you started out saying exercise, the senior citizens say, oh, I just can't do that, just too fast for me. So this is really geared towards the senior citizens. This is one of our biggest thing at the center. It's gone from having two people to 40 and 50 people in each class. So it's been very good. I get all of my muscles exercised. I've been able to meet a lot of people that I did not know before, and it's just a wonderful experience. And I've been benefited because uh, my circulation was poor, and it has increased, and um, my muscles have been, all of my muscles, muscles that I didn't know I had, have been exercised, and I just feel great. 
every parish here in Louisiana has a senior center operated by the Council on Aging. In addition to exercise, the centers offer classes in arts and crafts, like this ceramics class. Here the Golden Agers, as they are sometimes fondly called, are making Christmas gifts. But the class is much more than an opportunity to work with clay and glaze. It helps the elderly participants improve their manual dexterity and also gives them a sense of achievement. Once the projects are completed, they are usually sold. The Golden Touch is a consignment store. Senior citizens can bring a variety of their handmade items here for display and sale, such as this lovely afghan or this very colorful shawl. Or they may merely come and browse and buy some of the items that their friends have made in many of the numerous classes offered here at the center, such as this ashtray, which is made in the ceramics and pottery classes. The Golden Touch truly has a golden touch. In addition to the many activities, the Senior Center is also a place where the elderly can get a nutritious meal. Research has shown that many senior citizens who live alone tend to have lower nutritional standards than the rest of society. Many of the senior citizens at the Fairfield Center take part in the Meals on Wheels program. It is a program where the elderly can get a well-balanced meal for a nominal donation, which is encouraged but not mandatory. Developing positive mental attitudes is another important aspect of senior centers. Here a group of elderly people are learning how to earn extra money as election commissioners. The reassurance and stimulation of companionship is probably the most important reason why many Golden Agers attend senior centers. For without the centers, many senior citizens would just sit at home alone. Many of the older people, Jen, if they didn't have a center to go to, would stay at home and not see people on a daily basis. And it may, they may go for a week or two weeks, and then the longer you stay at home and don't see somebody else, the more apt you are to become sick and to become a, a more of a burden to the uh, government. Or, In other words, they may cost more in the long run but through Medicaid or something if they're not occupied and busy. If the center wasn't here, what would you be doing with your time during the day? Well, I don't know. I, just at home alone, I guess. Well, if there is any one thing that I've learned this week, it's that senior citizens are still very much a viable part of our society. They certainly are, Rob. Coming up next week on Folks, we'll be taking a look at teenage pregnancy. We'll visit a teen parent center and talk with three teen mothers. And we hope you'll join us then. Until next time, so long. <laughs> Funding for the production of Folks is provided in part by the Friends of LPB.